I just finished binging the new series, Mr. and Mrs. Smith on Prime Video, starring Donald Glover and Maya Erskine. It was created by Glover and Francesca Sloan, a writer on Atlanta and Fargo, who stepped in after Phoebe Waller-Bridge dropped out of the project because of creative differences. I personally love Atlanta and Fleabag so, so, so much. So when I heard Donald Glover and Phoebe Waller-Bridge were working together on this project, I was extremely excited. So hearing about her leaving, I definitely had reservations about what this project would turn out to be. I can imagine as both of them had huge successes on projects where they had a lot of creative control and projects that were essentially them channeling their singular vision and voice, sharing that responsibility in this particular job could have gotten a little bit dicey. I'm sure there's a lot of mutual respect there. Obviously they fostered a really strong friendship because of their time working on Solo, but having two alphas might not have yielded the best results in this case. The series is loosely based on the 2005 film Mr. and Mrs. Smith, which is an undisputed all-time classic, not quite because of the quality of the film, but more famous for bringing us Brangelina. And the references we're talking about here are extremely loose, really only borrowing the premise of a spy couple, but more relying on the name for that broader audience appeal and recognition. So instead of repeating the original premise of the couple being married for years without knowing each other's true professions as assassins, the show introduces Glover's and Erskine's characters as these sort of unnamed loners who've applied for a job with a secretive agency that ends up matching them together and they have to pose as a married couple, Jane and John Smith, and they're sent out on missions that vary in levels of difficulty and danger with really vague objectives and for reasons they're never told. They take on new identities as John and Jane Smith and have agreed to abandon their past to pretend to be a real married couple. They get paid extremely well to live in a luxurious townhouse in Manhattan so long as they keep successfully completing their missions and not asking too many questions. This show is subversive of the spy genre. It's not always glitz and glam and almost has the two leads seem sort of amateurish. Although they get to live the lavish life, they do missions at fancy black tie events, European ski resorts, and places like Lake Como, they aren't these invincible warriors that are absolute killing machines and not everything happens to work out smoothly for them. The two of them get themselves into a lot of sticky situations because of their own naivety and nonchalance towards their missions. And they also often make a lot of mistakes which turn out to be deeply rooted in their own personal insecurities. Honestly, they're both pretty unprofessional at being spies. At some points, I really questioned like, how do these people even get these jobs to do, you know, these spy things? And then obviously they show their capabilities, things happen. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> I guess they, they really do know how to do spy stuff. The show is a character study of these two very different people who've been brought together for the same goal, you know, doing questionable things to make a lot of cash, but then stumbling into something they didn't really expect, a relationship. There's the question of whether they would have ever went for one another if they weren't just put together as part of this program, or whether it's just the scenario that they're in and the mix of fear, passion, and lust that pushes them towards each other. It's actually like a modern arranged marriage mixed in with a little Love Island or Married at First Sight. The two of them are paired up based on some compatibility test. They don't know what each other look like and they need to at least pretend to be in a relationship. They spend so much time together, they do crazy things together with that heightened level of emotion and they start to develop feelings towards each other while at the same time, not actually having known each other for very long or even really knowing anything about that person and their previous life. The show feels almost like a romance drama about the struggles of a young couple all wrapped up in a spy thriller, and I'm totally here for it. It's also really sad because these characters are constantly questioning each other's feelings towards one another, not knowing what is true and what is just for the job. Like on Love Island, are they really in love or are they just playing the game? Both of them gave up their previous lives and can't share any information about their previous identities. And that's where the characters get stuck. And I felt like I got a little bit stuck too. Like, how can these two people legitimately love each other without really knowing anything about who they are? For most of the series, they have the classic couple bickering, but their differences are all based in the present moment. And not in a sense that the two are really getting to know each other in a more foundational way. The writing and the dialogue becomes 
a little bit repetitive as a result. There's another fight about John staying in touch with his mom against the company's rules. Another fight about Jane flirting with the next door neighbor. Another fight about how the two differ in their approaches to the assignments. And this results in the deterioration of their relationship. And it comes back to the bigger question that this series poses. Can you trust and love someone without knowing who they were? Can you bear your faults and insecurities to your partner and accept those of your partner? The show does so well to subtly pack all this emotional weight into this spy pairing. I do also want to talk about the chemistry between Glover and Erskine. I thought they had fantastic chemistry, platonically. I thought their dialogue together was quick, snappy, and they played so well off each other and had their own couple dynamic that felt really real. Romantically, I didn't quite feel that spark. Maybe it was somewhat intentional because the characters were sort of confused, but I can't deny that there were so many great moments and scenes that ranged from moments of comfort, laughter, and in-jokes, and little bickering sessions just sitting on the couch or lying in bed, all the way to full-blown heated arguments and screaming matches. They really felt like they'd been a long-time married couple that had fond memories together and were also fed up with each other. And the chemistry of these two really carried the show because it was centered around their relationship. Their talks felt natural and conversational, and I really could feel like they included these longer conversational scenes with dialogue that wasn't necessarily relevant to the plot, just to let us sit with the two of them and see their back and forth. It felt genuine and allowed us to watch their relationship grow. The show doesn't quite move linearly, sort of similar to Atlanta. Each episode is built around a specific idea and the audience is sort of left to fill in the gaps between episodes on their own. I think this can feel a little bit jarring because as we progress through the season, there are time skips and John and Jane clearly go through different missions and things together that we, we don't get to see and their relationship is growing off screen and we can feel like we're missing out on seeing something. But I think this allows the show to create a more naturalistic feeling. Not every mission of theirs is going to be crazy. They're not always going to be facing an absurd amount of adversity and conflict. Maybe we don't need to see some more routine things in between, but rather we get to slip in and see when things get really spicy. It takes a second to orient ourselves, but the gaps are filled in fairly quickly. Mr. and Mrs. Smith is definitely worth a watch. It looked absolutely great and it was extremely stylish. It had some powerhouse cameo appearances, the locations were amazing, and Donald Glover is just dressed so immaculately throughout the show, like, damn, I was literally waiting to see what fits, you know, John would crack out in each episode. It's a pretty fast-paced show with a decent amount of action and excitement, but it's primarily held together by its strong emotional core. As for a second season, with the way the finale ended, it's clear that they're pretty happy to finish the series with one season, but they left enough room to potentially do another season. Anyways, hopefully that all made sense. For more analysis, go ahead and check this video out right here. Thanks again. Bye.